Hello guys, today I'm going to take you through how to effectively answer the IELTS listening section, including some useful tricks and common distractions that you should be aware of. The IELTS listening test is designed to assess your ability to understand a spoken English in various contexts. Let's dive into it straight away. Understanding the IELTS listening test is one key thing that you should be aware of. The IELTS listening test consists of four different sections with a total of 40 questions. That's 10 questions each. And then you have approximately 30 minutes to complete the test and an additional 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Each section becomes progressively more difficult as you climb the ladder. So it's very crucial for you to stay focused and attentive throughout the test. One thing about IELTS listening is you need to stay focused and attentive. You don't need to distract yourself because there are a lot of distractors in the listening test. So without wasting much time, let's dive into the some tricks and strategies that you need to use or what I use to uh, that help me. So one, first of all, the first trick is for you to read the questions first. Before the recording starts, quickly read through the questions because you'll, give, you'll be given some few minutes or seconds to read through your questions. Make sure you don't sit just watching people around. Try to read the questions before the audio starts to play. This is going to give you an idea of what information you are going to be required to listen for in the audio. But make sure you also underline certain keywords in the questions to help you focus. Try to predict some kind of answers for yourself. Try to predict what kind of information, example, a number they are going to require from you, a name of a town they are going to require from you, a name of a person they are going to require from you, or is it a date, is it a cash number, is it a receipt number, what are they going to require from you? You need to listen for this. So. That's why you need to underline certain things, keywords in your questions earlier on, as I said. This can help you catch the answers more easily because once you've underlined the questions or the keywords, you've already predicted your answers in the future. And the answers will help you eliminate most of the distractors because you've already predicted that they are going to require me to maybe listen for, let's say, numbers. So I'm not going to, if they are saying something about towns or anything, I will not listen to the towns. I will just focus on that particular question for answers. So you need to ensure you underline certain keywords and then you read through the questions. The third uh, one we use is use the context. The recording often provides you context before giving you the answers. So they will ask you about, let's say, the guidelines or what they are requiring from you. Let's say they are asking you to give maybe two words answers or just a single word answer. So you need to also make sure you, you read all those questions or context very well. Pay attention to the introduction and any clues that sets the scenes because they're going to give you introduction or some clues that are going to set you onto the scene or whatever you are going to be required of. Fourth option is you need to stay calm and focused. If you miss an answer, don't panic at all because often you are definitely going to miss certain answers. But when you miss an answer, don't panic. That's one rule of eyelid listening. Don't panic. Once you panic, or you keep trying to look for that particular answer to that question, you will be losing four different things or you'll be losing a lot because the person is not going to pause for you to find an answer to that particular question. The person will continue or the audio will continue playing. So you need to forget about that single answer you missed and then focus on the others. You need to move on to the next question and come back to it if you have time to, at the end. Because if you keep saying, oh, let me think about question one, let me think about question two, you are going to miss question 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's going to cost you a lot. Fifth point is you need to also check your grammar and spelling. When transferring your answers, make sure they are grammatically and are spelled correctly. This is crucial as incorrect spellings are going to cost you a lot of marks. So you need to also ensure uh, when you are transferring your answers to your answer booklet, they make meaning or the spellings are correct and accurate. They are going to mark you based on spellings and grammatical errors because they want to know that you are able to listen to what someone is saying and then transfer it into writing or you are able to listen and understand what someone is saying. So you need to also ensure that your spellings are accurate because if someone says calm, you went to write came, it's a different thing altogether. The person was telling you to calm, you then went to write came. So it's different thing altogether. So you need to also ensure that your grammar and spellings are very accurate. And one most important trick or the sixth one is ensure you write all your answers in capital letters. I know why I'm saying this because every individual, you need to consider writing all your answers in capital letters on the answer sheet to avoid any issues with handwriting legibility. Mind you, the examiner going to mark your exams, doesn't know those short hands we've been writing, or it's going to find it difficult to see whatever you've written if you've written it in small letters because handwritings are different. 
some of us like me, I have a crooked handwriting and it's very difficult for some people to read whenever I write something. So what I did was to always ensure I write my answers in capital letters to avoid any spelling difficulty or the person can see whatever I've spelled or not. No. So if you write it in capital letters, it's going to help you a lot. So those are the big six. I call them the big six tips for myself to ensure that this eyelet listening goes on smoothly for me. Let's also move on to the distractors. Number one distractor I said is the test often includes many distractors. So you need to ensure information that sounds correct. So distractors are just more like information that sounds correct, but are not the answer they are requesting for. For example, a speaker might say, I used to work as a teacher, but now I am an engineer. If the question asks you, or the question is demanding about the current job of the one speaking, the correct answer to this is the engineer, not a teacher. Because the person said, I used to work as a teacher, but now I am an engineer. So if the person is asking you for the current job of speaker, you should know straight away that it's not teacher, but rather it's an engineer. This eyelet test is also going to use a lot of synonyms and paraphrases. The recording might use different ways or phrases from those in the questions. Be prepared for any synonyms and paraphrasing at all. For instance, the question might use the word begin but the recording or the person speaking might say start so the question is demanding you like maybe the person is asking the question is saying begin with but the person saying says oh let's start with you understand so it's more or less like the person is using a different way to qualify the same word which has the same meaning so you don't have to be looking out for begin because the person didn't say begin in the audio therefore the answer is not begin i'm still not getting the answer the person says start so you should know that start is the same as begin also, another distractor they use is uh, multiple speakers. Sometimes multiple speakers are involved in a conversation. Pay attention to who says what, as the answer may depend on the perspective of a specific speaker. Because it will be like three or four people talking, but the one saying the answer might be speaker A instead of speaker B. Because speaker A might be saying something and you hear speaker B coming in to say something different. So you might think, I'm only listening to speaker A. Speaker B, whatever speaker B says is going to be the answer. No. Ensure you focus on what the question is asking you. Look through. So it's more difficult because you need to look through. You need to read and listen. So it's more or less like you're using two senses at the same time. So you just make sure you stay focused. Another distractor I also notice is the speaker always try to change information or changing of information. The speaker might correct him or herself or change their answer completely. So you should always ensure you are listening for phrases such as actually, sorry, and I mean which often indicates correction. So when someone says actually, so they are trying to correct themselves of whatever they previously said. So you need to ensure you are listening attentively to such phrases that they are going to use. Then be ready for the right answer because when the person says actually, the, person, the next thing the person is going to say is going to be the correct answer because the person is trying to correct himself or herself. So if the person say actually, sorry, I mean that, I actually mean this. So the person is trying to change his or her answer that the person previously said because the person might say something that you see as an answer but later during the conversation the person might, might change his or her mind so always be attentive and make sure you listen to this key way also another one of the fifth point is also noise and accent there are going to be a lot of distractors such as the environment that they are going to be having the audio or the recording is going to be a noisy environment let's say particular let's say they choose a stadium like this you know, when they are playing football, it's not always noisy around. Even though it's noisy sometimes, but it's not always. When they score a goal, the noise is different from when they are just playing the ball. Or when someone makes a key pass or something, the noise or the sound that happens at the background is different. So if the commentators are talking, and then you hear someone scoring a goal, they will keep talking, they will not stop talking, they will, keep, they will continue talking. So those noises that come in are the distracted. Or let's say they are recording it at a train station. So when they are speaking, you see that the trains will be just be passing by will making noise and those noise will distract you you try to listen to that noise because that noise will be higher than what they are saying so you need to make sure you pay attention and recordings can include background noise or different accent they can also try to change the accent of whoever is talking the person can decide to change into an english or different uh, english accent so you need to stay focused despite any background noise stay focused that's one thing about eyelid listening don't be distracted about anything stay focused to summarize all this the key to excelling in eyelet listening is to stay focused, as I said. Anticipate what you need to listen for and be aware of common distractions because there are going to be a lot of distractions. Continue practicing regularly with different types of listening materials. Don't keep focus on one listening materials. Change listening materials. 
and you become more adept to identifying the correct answers. Good luck with your IELTS preparation and remember to stay calm and confident during the test. Don't let anything distract you. Don't try to distract yourself by trying to pick up what someone is saying. Or let's say, as I said earlier, if you miss something, move on. Don't try to, oh, let me pick up what my friend is writing. And then it's not, you're not even going to get a chance to even look out onto someone's answer sheet. So just make sure you still focus throughout the exams or throughout the listening exams. Thank you for listening. And I hope these tips helps you achieve a great score in IELTS. And see you again in the next one. And if you haven't subscribed, please kindly hit the subscribe button. Like, comment, share your thoughts, anything. If it's helpful, let us know. If it's not helpful, let us know where to hit on again. Hit the bell icon so that anytime we post, you'll be the first person to get a notification and then come and have a look at it. Stay focused and wish you all the best. See you in the next one. Thank you. See ya.